Saw dudes, ever since I introduced Warframe content to my channel, people have been asking for a Volt build. I can't blame them since he's a comfortable frame for many and one of the two speedsters in the game, with the other being Gauss. Despite being an old frame, Volt's kit holds up extremely well in today's sandbox, landing him at the top of E tier as a jack of all trades. Today's video will walk you through a full guide on how to build Volt Prime and how to optimize his kit for your needs. Less yapping and more build crafting. Let's get started. From this point on, I will provide ability explanations for frames since they will influence build choices down the line. Please feel free to skip to the build section if you already know what the frame does. Volt's passive causes movement to build up static energy, adding bonus electricity damage towards Volt's next weapon attack or ability cast. Each meter traveled adds 10 electricity damage to the next attack, up to a maximum of 1000. This damage does not combine with any other elements and is not affected by mods. It can crit, but is ultimately useless. This is a passive that should see a slight rework. His first ability is Shock, which sends out a bolt of electricity towards an area dealing 200 electricity damage and chaining to 5 nearby enemies within 15 meters. Each cast has a 100% chance of applying electricity status. This ability is extremely underwhelming and is usually subsumed off. Volt's second ability is Speed. Casting the ability grants us and allies within 25 meters a 75% speed buff and 25% reload buff for 12 seconds. The 75% speed buff applies to movement speed and melee attack speed, which is great for all mission types. Then we have one of the best utility abilities in the game, Electric Shield. Upon casting, Volt creates an energy barrier that lasts 25 seconds. The height and length of the shield are unaffected by range mods. Shots that are fired through the shield are granted 50% additive electricity damage and a 2 times modded critical multiplier. The electricity damage does not combine with other elements and can be stacked if shot through multiple shields. The crit damage is not stackable. The crit takes modded crit damage and doubles it, taking weapon DPS through the roof. Shields can be picked up by Volt, becoming smaller in the process and moving according to the camera. Electric Shield is one of the few abilities that can buff operator damage with its crit damage buff, making it especially useful for Eidolon hunts and Void Cascades. Finally, Volt's fourth ability is Discharge. This ability causes Volt to expel a large electric surge, tagging enemies within 20 meters and stunning them. Each enemy affected by the ability emits arcs of electricity, shocking other enemies within an 8 meter range. Enemies affected take 1200 damage per second, which increases depending on how many arcs are formed. Volt's game loop is pretty simple, considering that he is a bit old. At the start of the mission, or when entering combat, cast speed and electric shield. Make sure to pick up the shield for extra electricity damage and a critical multiplier bonus. Then play the game normally, killing enemies with your weapons. Use discharge to stun enemies and kill groups. If you are coming under fire, use electric shield. Remember to cast speed when it runs out, then rinse and repeat. Today's video has 4 build variants. A Steel Path General use nuke build, a comfortable endurance setup, an Eidolon Hunter build, and a speedrun setup. I don't want to waste your time, so there are timestamps for each variant. Because Volt is such a versatile frame, I highly suggest installing an Aura Forma so that there is more build flexibility. He's a jack of all trades, so I bet you saw this coming. First up, we have the General Steel Path Nuke build. This build can nuke maps on base Steel Path, but does not scale well into Endurance. While it could be used in Endurance missions, there are better options. The Aura is up to preference, but to up the damage of Discharge and effectiveness of Speed, we will be using Growing Power. Other options are on the table depending on what faction you are facing or your preferred playstyle. In the Exilus slot, we have Cunning Drift for the extra ability range. However, other options are Power Drift for ability strength or Prime Sure Footed to completely negate Stagger. However, I don't encourage using PSF due to the presence of Electric Shield. The first two mods are Prime Continuity and Narrow Minded, which drastically increase our ability duration by 154%. This gives us a solid foundation for all of the abilities in our kit. Then we have Prime Flow, which increases our max energy reserves to a massive 855. Volt is a caster frame and relies on abilities to stay alive so this is necessary. Transient Fortitude offers a bonus 55% ability strength, but does bring down our total duration to 226.5%. The extra strength grants our discharge enough damage to kill groups easily and buffs our speed multipliers. Now we have our ability range mods, Archon Stretch and Overextended. Archon Stretch has the bonus effect of granting 2 energy per second for 5 seconds after affecting an enemy with electricity status through an ability. This does proc off of Discharge, lessening our energy economy issues. Overextended pushes out the range of Discharge, allowing it to nuke more easily. Then we have Streamline. Ability efficiency allows us to spam Discharge more often and prevents us from burning through energy reserves too fast. Capacitance converts 3% of the damage dealt by Discharge into shields split between teammates. This acts as our survivability mod and support mod providing us tons of shield gating without much hassle. Now let's go over the Endurance Steel Path build. 
my personal favorite since it can do all mission types. The build stays the same, for the most part, but swaps out Overextended for Augur Reach and Streamline for Rolling Guard. Overextended is nice for wiping crowds and lower level missions, but Discharge's damage quickly falls off. In Endurance missions, Discharge is mainly used for shield regen via Capacitance and Crowd Control. Therefore, we drop Overextended, which does drop our range, but gives us 60% ability strength back. Augur Reach helps mitigate range lost by Narrow Minded, putting us back on the positive end. The extra strength improves speeds multipliers and allows our helmet abilities to perform better. Nourish is a great example of an ability that prioritizes strength over range. Rolling Guard provides 3 seconds of iframes in case of an emergency and provides status cleansing. The only real threat are toxin procs, which are easily handled by rolling. Now we have the Eidolon Hunter setup. If you ever wondered why Volt is so popular, this is a major reason why. On top of being insanely good in endgame, Volt has made a name for himself hunting Eidolons for sport and making them go extinct. In the Aura slot, we have Rifle Amp, which increases our outgoing rifle damage as well as our teammates for popping Synovia quickly. In the Exilus slot, we have Power Drift for the extra ability strength, which will help our abilities out. However, if you want to completely deny knockdowns, I recommend using Prime Sure Footed. Prime Continuity and Narrow Minded increase ability duration, helping keep Speed and Electric Shield active for longer. It also helps us keep the Shock Trooper damage buff up for a longer period. Transient Fortitude, Blind Rage, and Augur Secrets buff the multipliers provided by Speed and damage from Shock Trooper. Vigorous Swap provides us a 165% damage bonus to our guns for 3 seconds upon swapping, again helping us pop Synovias. Adaptation provides us with adequate survivability and lessens the strain of managing health and shields in prolonged combat. Finally, we have Shock Trooper, the augment that gives us Elephant Gun status. This mod allows us to hold our first ability, Shock, to grant to us and our allies an additional 100% additive electricity damage to their attacks. This allows for the creation of radiation damage on weapons with just a heat mod. With the ability strength and duration on this build, we get a 292% electric damage bonus for 114 seconds. Lastly, we have the Gauss Prime Speedrun Competitor, the Speedrun Variant. This build is meant to be used when completing capture or exterminate missions and abuses speed to make killing a breeze. The Aura has been swapped to Steel Charge, which buffs our melee damage for brainless mashing. Power Drift takes the place of Cunning Drift since we won't require range when everything will be blended alive. Prime Continuity, Narrow Minded, Constitution, and Augur Message take our total ability duration to a stupid 339%, bringing speed's duration to 40 seconds. Transient Fortitude and Blind Rage increase our ability strength to 269% for a 3.02 times speed multiplier. This is more than enough to blitz through enemies with melee attacks of any kind, even in Steel Path. Finally, we have Streamline, which reduces the ability efficiency penalty that Blind Rage incurs. This helps us recast speed and electric shield if the mission drags on for a little longer than planned. Rolling Guard is here to prevent death, since you can't run fast if you're dead. Next up, we have the Helmet section. Volt can make good use of many Helmet abilities, but there are some that are better than others. The abilities that stand out the most are Eclipse, Nourish, Terrify, and Roar. Eclipse recently got reworked and now has a toggle feature which allows us to choose whether we get the damage reduction or damage increase bonus. For Volt, we will be using the damage increase, which is a multiplicative bonus that is calculated after a weapon's total damage value. This ability is meant to be used on Eidolon hunts and allows for easy Synovia popping. Combined with an electric shield, we'll be giving those sentience arthritis very early on. Nourish will still make an appearance on this list thanks to its energy multiplier. The viral damage and energy generation may have gotten nerfed, but it's not enough to make it worthless. The viral damage is great to have for damage over time builds and pairs beautifully with electric shield. This means that neither viral nor electric damage needs to be modded on weapons, saving tons of mod space which allows for even more crit focus. Terrify is a somewhat niche option, but still makes the list thanks to its armor stripping capabilities. Casting Terrify sends enemies running away, but this is easily stopped with Discharge, which benefits from the armor strip. In Base Deal Path, the armor that enemies have can be a massive problem, which Terrify can fix. That being said, I would still not bring it into Endurance because of the massive 75 energy cost. Roar is a standard damage buffing ability, but is catered towards damage over time as opposed to Eclipse. Roar acts as a Bane mod, and can easily take the place of one opening up mod space. This can allow for more crit scaling, and just works well with Electric Shield. The Arcane options that I feel are the best for Volt are Arcane Energize, Arcane Nullifier, Molt Augmented, and Molt Efficiency. Yes, I am aware that 3 out of the 4 options seem uninspired, and I will address that soon enough. Arcane Energize is a great option for Volt, since he is constantly recasting abilities. Even with Nourish, there is a possibility that energy problems may arise, which Energize fixes completely. Arcane Nullifier is strictly used against Eidolons, in order to negate magnetic status effects. Having this Arcane allows us to go without Rolling Guard, meaning we don't need to worry about iframes and can instead tank casually. 
Then we have Molt Augmented, which adds ability strength on each kill. This is especially useful for endurance missions. This arcane becomes mandatory if you have overextended on your build since it will offset the ability strength loss. If you're not using overextended, then it's not required. Molt Efficiency increases the duration of abilities while shields are active. This is a quality of life arcane and can be used if you don't want to use arcane energize. Of course, you can always run weapon damage arcanes if you want. However, it's not really needed unless you are hunting Eidolons or going to level cap with a specific weapon type. For Eidolon hunts, I run a combination of Arcane Nullfire and Arcane Acceleration. For general missions, including Endurance, I use Arcane Energize and Molt Augmented. The only focus school I would recommend for Volt is Matter Eye. Everything in this focus school accentuates Volt's kit. Power transfer is great for increasing casting speed, which is the biggest issue with Discharge and even Electric Shield. The 50% bonus is nice to have and can prevent premature deaths. Sling Strength grants us 40% ability strength, which factors into speed, discharge, and our chosen helmet ability. This will be perfect for Eidolon Hunters, which rely on Shock Trooper and Eclipse for extra damage. Phoenix Talons is somewhat helpful since the extra damage does work with the Electric Shield crit scaling. However, one of the best synergies comes from Void Strike. The bonus damage helps with last gasp survivals and can be used in tandem with Electric Shield for bonus operator damage. This also works with Contamination Wave, making enemies even more vulnerable to operator damage. Okay, now let's cover Archon Shards. The three Archon Shards you should consider using are Amber for casting speed, Crimson for either ability duration or strength, and Violet for melee critical damage. As already mentioned, casting speed is incredibly important since it minimizes the time when Volt is vulnerable to damage. I suggest using at least one Tau Forge Amber Shard or two normal Amber Shards. Crimson Archon Shards are up to preference. Ability Strength is nice to have if you are using Nourish or a damage buff ability but isn't really needed outside of the mods. It also affects speed, but again, you don't need too much. However, if you insist on using Overextended for Endurance, you can use some to offset the Ability Strength loss. Ability Duration is my preferred stat, since it reduces the need to recast important abilities, thus reducing the amount of energy spent per minute. Of course, you could balance this out with shards of each bonus. Finally, we have Melee Critical Damage Shards. Since Volt buffs melee attack speed, having extra crit damage is insanely nice. Violet Shards have their crit damage bonus doubled when our max energy is over 500 which is the case for most of the builds because we have Prime Flow. If you are a melee enthusiast, consider using it. This goes without saying, but if you need armor strip and don't want to use abilities, go for two Emerald Archon Shards and use a Corrosive based weapon. Now let's cover the Companion. As usual, you could use a Panzer Volpa Phyla, but for today's setup, I chose to use Worm Prime for its amazing utility. Worm Prime can use Negate, which prevents a status effect from applying to us every 5 seconds. This is great since it can deny toxin effects from insta-killing us. This is reinforced by our use of Rolling Guard in the Endurance build, which gives us enough redundancy to keep this up at level cap. Guardian gives us additional safety in case we screw up discharge casts. Crowd Dispersion serves as a last ditch crowd control tool. Reinforced Bond increases our fire rate by 60% if our companion's max shields exceeds 1200. This is massively helpful, since speed only increases melee attack speed, but not fire rate. Tenacious Bond grants us a final 1.2 times critical multiplier, which does stack with Electric Shield for ridiculous scaling. Vacuum, Animal Instinct, and Regen are quality of life mods. Calculated Redirection puts us past the 1200 shield threshold to activate Reinforced Bond's bonus. And no, before you ask, Negate does not work with Manifold Bond, hence why we don't have it on the build. The Sentinel weapon I chose to use was Roll Clock, modded for gas and magnetic damage. It acts as a stat stick for the Vigilante set, and also activates the Tenacious Bond crit bonus. Before ending the video, I want to stress the importance of using weapons that complement Volt. Please try using weapons that benefit from crit, either with a high crit chance or critical multiplier. Having a 100% crit rate with a 2 times critical multiplier will be pretty decent already, since Electric Shield stacks on Electric Damage and multiplies the effective critical multiplier to 4. For instance, my Buva Bukor has a critical multiplier of 11.7 times, which becomes 23.4 times after being passed through Electric Shield. I'm sure you understand where I'm going with this. In the same vein, use Operator Amps that have good crit stats. The amp I use for endgame content is constructed with a Surtis Brace, Rat Black Prism, and Fat Scaffold. The primary fire has a 58% crit chance and a 2.6 times critical multiplier, which turns into 5.2 times after being shot through an electric shield. Keep these perks in mind when creating your weapon loadout. That is it everyone, one volt video to rule them all. It's no surprise that this Warframe continues to be insanely popular given his flexibility and high damage potential. His crowd control, utility, and innate damage buffing aged like fine wine in today's meta. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any tips, leave them in the comments. As always, thank you all for watching, and happy farming.